guess what a flat earther did? If you guessed that they found something that totally confirms the Earth is a globe, you guessed right. Ben, who runs the YouTube channel Taboo Conspiracy, thinks that the Earth is flat. Ben also regularly posts videos unwittingly debunking Flat Earth. Recently, he posted a video claiming that the island of Crete was visible from Israel. But it was just clouds. I pointed out that his video debunked Flat Earth at least seven times. He later deleted his video. Then he posted a video claiming that you could see the peaks of the Alps from Wales over 700 miles away. Before I could even respond, several other people pointed out that the angular positions of the claimed mountains were all wrong. They were just clouds. Again, he later deleted that video. Now Ben claims that photographs taken from the cockpit of an airplane don't match globe predictions. I predict Ben will delete that video too. Ben starts out by showing that he doesn't quite understand the dynamics of flight. No surprise for a flat earther. If we lived on a ball, it's axiomatic that all aircraft must continually dip their noses to account for the curvature of the Earth. If a commercial airline flies at 575 miles per hour, in just 10 minutes of flight, the airplane would have to drop approximately 6,123 feet to maintain level flight. That's a huge adjustment. Simple geometry is not Ben's strength. Any middle schooler that successfully completed 8th grade science and math can correct Ben here. In order to maintain level flight on a globe, the plane needs to drop exactly zero feet. Level flight means not changing elevation. Dropping means changing elevation. There is an orientation change that happens to the plane as Ben's diagram shows. Even his diagram, though, shows that the elevation from the surface does not change. Ben goes on to ramble for a while, showing more of his lack of understanding of flight dynamics. Despite his incorrect terminology about dipping the nose, I will agree that the orientation of the plane must vary during the flight. What I do want to discuss is whether there is any evidence that the airplane does indeed adjust its nose downward to account for the curvature of the Earth, as it must if we lived on a ball. Because if there is no downward curvature adjustment during flight, then there is no globe. I agree. That's a great hypothesis. Another great hypothesis is if there is a downward curvature adjustment or change in orientation during flight, then there is no flat Earth. I asked Ben if he agrees with my hypothesis in a comment on the video he posted, as well as sending him an email specifically asking for a direct answer to this question. Ben rejected my hypothesis testing flat Earth. What was his reasoning? He didn't give a reason. Instead, happily stating that he knows that there is a south celestial pole and that there is an angle change. He says this is a mystery for flat Earth. Really? A mystery? And you're happy with this instead of applying the same standard to flat Earth that you apply to the globe. This is an example of the third law of FLIRF. Flirfs are pseudoscientists when evaluating flat Earth and science deniers when evaluating globe evidence. No exceptions. In an unexpected twist, Ben comes around and offers a hypothesis that he accepts. However, if you could use an attitude indicator to show both a curvature adjustment and axial rotation, then I would seriously consider that evidence because this is still a huge flat Earth proof for me. Ben, I accept this hypothesis and endeavor to test it using your video. Let's see how Ben intends to test his initial hypothesis. But there is another way to make this determination. The stars. We are going to analyze an amazing time lapse filmed by a pilot on a flight from Munich, Germany to Sao Paulo, Brazil. You can find the unedited version on this website. Please note that this Beyond Clouds website has no association with the Flat Earth, which means this evidence comes from an unbiased party. 
The distance for the full flight from Munich to Sao Paulo is over 6,000 miles. But the recording was only for approximately 3,000 miles. That begins before Palma, located on the island of Mallorca, Spain, and the video ends before the equator after the plane passes Dakar, Senegal, on the western coast of Africa. This is a great way to test the hypothesis. Before I get into that, we need to appreciate the standard flurf process of focusing so much on their imagined globe debunk that they wind up confirming the globe in multiple other ways, like showing the flight route. On flat earth, the route would go over France to the Bay of Biscay, just brushing past the north coast of Spain, then over the Atlantic Ocean for most of the rest of the flight. But what did the flight actually do? It skirted the south edge of France and Spain, then over a good section of Africa. That matches a great circle route. You know, the route you would fly on a globe. Oops. Secondly, Ben highlights the movement of the stars looking south. When you analyze them, they circle a single center of rotation due south. Ben admits this is a mystery for Flat Earth. It's not a mystery, though. It directly contradicts the necessary observations for a cosmic Tupperware lid, rotating above a moldy dirt pizza. It is required that the stars move laterally when looking south on Pizza Planet. Oops. Third, in this video and his follow-up video, the path traced by the stars looking both north and south is a circle, not an ellipse. If the Tupperware lid over the festering pizza were rotating with the stars in it, they would form an ellipse everywhere except directly below the center of rotation. The shape of the ellipse must vary based on your distance from the center of rotation. In reality, we observe circular star trails just as the globe predicts. Oops. Fourth, if the dirt pizza was covered with a Tupperware lid, due to the law of perspective, all the stars must be visible all the time. There's nothing in the way to block them. The stars that are farther away would just get mushed together, and they could never be hidden below the horizon when looking over the oceans, particularly from an airplane flying well above the ocean. Oops. Okay, Ben debunked Frisbee Terra enough for now. Back to his analysis of the flight. Of course, some movement of the stars is expected with any time lapse. Keep in mind that when you're in the north and facing southwest, like in this flight, the stars should rotate in a downward slant to the right and clockwise motion somewhat like this. For this time lapse, we're going to track these two stars. The one on top seems to have a tail of stars that rise up and to the left. It's easy to spot. For brevity, I'm going to speed up the footage. The plane is going to adjust its heading left and right a few times, but try to keep an eye out for those two stars. There are the two stars again. Here they are over on the right side. They have dropped a little, but here they are again. And that's the end of the time lapse. This is the beginning position of the stars. Approximately 3,000 miles later, here is the ending position. As expected, the star slightly rotated clockwise and dropped slightly. You can even see how the star on top with the tail looks a little bigger and has rotated clockwise. So, what is the problem with this time lapse for the globe? The problem is that the plane has to be dipping its nose to account for the alleged curvature of the Earth. Great, Ben. I'm completely with you. Keep going. For a simple illustration, if I had a stunning view of the stars at the beginning of my flight, as time progresses and the nose of the plane drops to account for the curvature of the Earth, the stars should appear to rise up like this. In fact, the nose of the airplane is allegedly dropping while the stars, which are somewhat fixed and allegedly separate from the Earth, should appear to rise up if we lived on a ball. But you don't need to believe my illustrations. Fortunately, Google Earth allows us to model this same flight with the stars in the background and shows us exactly what would happen if we lived on a globe. 
For this Google Earth model, I used our distance of roughly 3,000 miles on the exact same flight route that I showed earlier. I set the altitude at 10,000 meters or 32,800 feet. Remember, this is how the globe should work. Now, watch the stars. But does Google Earth model the positions of the stars? Google Earth allows us to model this same flight with the stars in the background. Ben, Google Earth does not model the positions of the stars over time correctly. If it did, you would have to enter a start date and time and an ending date and time. Google Earth has no place to input this information. It doesn't model the correct star movements. In order to model star positions, you need something that models star positions like Stellarium or Starry Night, or any of the hundreds of other options that astronomers use. Unfortunately for Ben, I have a friend that is an astronomer, Astronomy Live. He made a video where he astrometrically solved the time-lapse video. He used software that looks at the patterns of stars in each frame to figure out the celestial coordinates of each pixel. He then used a planetarium program that he wrote to show which stars would be visible based on the globe and the plane's flight path. Then he plotted the celestial coordinates from the time lapse onto his program's sky chart. When plotting the airplane's position throughout the flight, the stars that are visible and their positions are consistent with the globe. Astronomy Live's full video is a great analysis. I have linked it in the YouTube description. Be sure to watch it and tell him in the comments how much you love his video. For this video, I just need to focus on Taboo Conspiracy's hypothesis and the analysis of it. Here is again what Ben said. For simple illustration, if I had a stunning view of the stars at the beginning of my flight, as time progresses and the nose of the plane drops to account for the curvature of the Earth, the stars should appear to rise up like this. In fact, the nose of the airplane is allegedly dropping while the stars, which are somewhat fixed and allegedly separate from the Earth, should appear to rise up if we lived on a ball. Since the plane is changing directions several times during the flight and the star field is rotating over time, it's difficult to identify if the stars have appropriately risen as they must on the globe just by looking at them on screen. We need a way to isolate their elevation from rotation and the airplane's direction change. This can be done using the visible stars to identify the location of the South Celestial Pole. Astronomy Live put some frames from the flight into software that identifies stars and overlays the lines of right ascension and declination from the celestial sphere on the screen. This frame from the beginning of the flight identifies the location of the south celestial pole off the screen to the bottom left. This arc near the visible horizon is 50 degrees south declination. Looking at the flight route, the plane is at about 40 degrees north latitude. That is exactly what you would expect on a globe. To determine the axial rotation for Ben's hypothesis, we remember we're looking primarily south, not north. A rotating Tupperware lid must show lateral moving stars when looking south. A globe must show star rotation the opposite direction of looking north. To test this part, I identified these three stars that are visible throughout the flight. Then I drew a line on them and put an angleometer, that's a protractor, on screen to measure the angle. It's 26 degrees sloping up to the right. In the frame from the middle of the video, the south celestial pole has moved up significantly. This shows that there is a curvature adjustment, as Ben puts it. The horizon is somewhere around 70 degrees declination. Measuring the angle of the stars, I put the same line on the same three stars and I measure an angle of zero degrees. The stars have rotated clockwise. The video continues flying over Dakar, Senegal, then the Atlantic Ocean for quite some time. In one of the final frames of the video, the position of the South Celestial Pole is off screen just to the west, showing more curvature adjustment and the angle of the stars is now 38 degrees sloping down to the right. That's a total of 64 degrees of clockwise rotation. That's the axial rotation Ben mentioned in his hypothesis. We know there's a 15 degree per hour drift on the globe, so this time lapse covered just over four hours of time. 
Let's remember what Ben said at the beginning. What I do want to discuss is whether there is any evidence that the airplane does indeed adjust its nose downward to account for the curvature of the Earth, as it must if we lived on a ball. Because if there is no downward curvature adjustment during flight, then there is no globe. This is exactly what we found, Ben. There was a downward curvature adjustment during the flight. Let's examine the additional hypothesis that Ben emailed me. However, if you could use an attitude indicator to show both a curvature adjustment and axial rotation, then I would seriously consider that evidence, because that is still a huge flat earth proof for me. Ben, when a proper analysis is performed on the video, we find that the nose of the plane is now pointing down relative to its starting position. This is a fantastic attitude indicator. The rotation of the stars is also an attitude indicator confirming axial rotation of the Earth. Ben, I showed exactly what you said you would consider as evidence for the globe. Be sure to subscribe so you can see if Ben will be honest and accept the results of the testing of his own hypothesis. Some fresh lemon juice with, yeah, with the lemon that's been sitting there for a while and was like going bad. So I thought, yeah, screw that. 